In this series, The Hunt for Old Guns, we look at 19th century American firearms, the rare, the unusual, and the iconic. I'm Jeff Goodson. In this episode, we'll take a short look at the early history of the American carbine. Almost everyone who collects old guns is interested in the history of the guns they collect. The individual focus is highly personal. My special interest is in 19th century American carbines. Partly this comes from an interest in the history of America in the 1800s, and partly it comes from an early fascination with the Goodson family carbine, this guy right here, that our family used to help settle the Texas frontier after the Civil War. In this first segment on American carbines, we'll look at how the carbine evolved and the major characteristics that distinguish them. There were four major kinds of long arms in America in the 19th century. They were generally distinguished by the length of the barrel. Muskets have the longest barrels for long range shooting. Their barrels are generally over 34 inches and typically have three barrel bands that attach the barrel to the forearm. Rifles are the next longest with barrels generally from 25 to 34 inches. These typically have two barrel bands. Musketoons, like this one, are an obsolete firearm from the 19th century. They're in between the rifle and the carbine. This one was made by the Springfield Armory in the 1850s. Carbines are the shortest long arms. They have the shortest barrels, usually from about 18 to 22 inches long. Typical have a single barrel band. This example is a Sharps carbine from the Civil War era when the carbine was in its heyday. Throughout history, from Alexander the Great to Julius Caesar to Genghis Khan, men riding horses into battle were the vanguard of troops that conquered much of the known world. This endured until the early 20th century when mechanized vehicles finally replaced the cavalry brought about the end of the horse soldier. Gunpowder was invented around the 10th century and by the late 13th century, the Chinese were making guns out of brass and iron. Europeans were making black powder guns by the 14th century. In the 1700s, especially in Europe, guns were being developed specifically for soldiers on horseback. The earliest of these, named after the French horseman or carbinier à cheval, had short barrels that were lighter and easier for the whole soldier to carry. This configuration was superbly adapted to use by the cavalry. By the end of the 1700s, carbines were in widespread use in Europe. The form wasn't really adopted in America, though, until the first American carbine appeared in 1834. The most distinguishing characteristic of the carbine is its short length, short barrel, and light weight in comparison to the rifle. Barrel lengths are typically about 18 to 22 inches long. A few longer barreled carbines existed, including this one. These were the earliest carbines of the 1830s and 1840s. These were the Hall and the Hall North carbines, America's first martial carbines designed for the newly authorized U.S. Dragoons. Shorter barrels and lighter weight quickly followed was dictated by the experience of the early American cavalrymen. Very short barrel carbines, mostly made for trappers, became popular, but not until near the end of the 19th century. Most of these were made by Winchester. The short barrel of the carbine sacrifices both range and accuracy but they're a reliable lightweight arm that mounted soldiers could use at short to medium range. To reduce the weight of the gun, carbine barrels are round instead of the much heavier octagonal barrels like this one found on many 19th century rifles. This Sharps Buffalo rifle from the 1870s made from a converted Civil War carbine is an extreme example of the heavy octagon barrels used in the slaughter of the American Buffalo. The second most distinguishing characteristic is a saddle ring attached to the left side of the gun by either a ring bar or a staple. This is what it looks like on an old Sharps. It's this feature which led to the term for these guns that's very commonly used today, saddle ring carbines, or SRCs for short. The saddle ring was used to attach a leather sling, like this one, that was worn over the soldier of the rider to secure the gun while it was on horseback. In a few models, like this late 19th century Evans carbine, Sling swivels were used to attach a shoulder step instead of a saddle ring. Other carbines have both a saddle ring and one or two sling rings. Saddle rings aren't an American invention though. They were common on European carbines by the end of the 1700s. They first appeared here on the first true American carbine in 1834 and persisted until the end of the 19th century. The very last U.S. made saddle ring carbine was the Model 1898 Crag made by the Springfield Armory. It marked the end of the era of the whole soldier. As you can see, it's a relatively modern looking bolt action gun with a small saddle ring on the left hand side. A third characteristic, although less diagnostic, is the rounded heel and toe of the butt of these guns, as opposed to the sharp heel and toe of the typical rifle butt. This feature was adopted in the middle of the 19th century and it endured 
because it mostly fixed the problem of catching the gun on the cavalry soldier's clothes or horse tack. These three characteristics, the short barrel, the saddle ring, and the butt profile, define the American carbine. While they evolved over the course of the 19th century, all three of these features persisted even as military needs for the cavalry changed. In future episodes, we'll dive deeper into the 19th century American carbine and explore some of the rare, unusual, and iconic carbines that drive collectors literally to the ends of the earth to bring one home for their collection. This is the hunt for old guns. I'm Jeff Goodson for guns.com.